Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. This is episode four of five in our series on movies. I guess that might make it like a mini series, really. Uh, why did we start making these things? They're like an art form and they tell stories, but why did we start doing this? And how do we capture them in the first place? We've also talked about so far in this series how our brains perceive moving images. It's actually a trick, it's a weakness in our own brains. Make sure you watch all three of those episodes. This is episode four talking about the sound of movies, which is really, really important. When you think about going to the movies, most of us probably think of this as a visual thing, right? You wanna go see a movie, but you're actually hearing a movie too. If you've ever been in a theater with bad sound, I mean, it's just the worst experience. Everything in a movie is done for a singular purpose, to make you feel something, to tell a story that makes you feel something. Listen to this quote from composer Bernard Herrmann. I feel that music on the screen can seek out and intensify the inner thoughts of the characters. It can invest a scene with terror, grandeur, gaiety, or misery. It can propel narrative swiftly forward or slow it down. It often lifts mere dialogue into the realm of poetry. Finally, it's the communicating link between the screen and the audience, reaching out and enveloping all into one single experience. And if you really think about that quote, which is an awesome quote, by the way, awesome find Blair, researcher for this one. When you really think about it, there have been stories that actors and actresses were actually worried that the music in their scenes would outshine their acting performance because music can add so much into a film. But how exactly do composers make us feel things through music, right? Music works best to evoke different emotions because it works on our subconscious mind. The listener doesn't necessarily have to know what the music means, but only how it makes them feel. And when they do that with specific scenes, you're going to feel something even more strongly. Some of the simplest examples of this are found in, believe it or not, you're probably thinking like romantics, or like dramas, no way man, horror movies and thrillers. They are the best at this. They tend to use dissonant screeching sounds and chords in their soundtracks. Think of any horror movie soundtrack ever. They're all kind of squealy. And the reason is dissonant or dissonant sounds refer to inharmonious or harsh sounding chords. And the reason they do that is because they want to emulate animals that are in distress. A study in 2010 from the University of California studied this phenomenon. They looked at some vertebrates who, when under duress, produced something called a, quote, nonlinear vocalization, usually a harsh and unpredictable sound. The study found that humans who make movies often capitalize on this, especially composers in film and television, because these sounds evoke specific emotions. Or, you know, I could just quote the study, quote, film soundtracks may contain sounds that if produced naturally would be classified as nonlinear vocal attributes. The use of these simulated nonlinearities is not random, but rather appears to be specifically used to enhance the emotional impact of scenes. And I'm sure you can think of some examples of this, you know, without me giving you any. So go ahead, think for a second. Ree, 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 ree. That's really awesome, right? That harsh stabbing sound of the violin chords, that's from Psycho, right? And it makes you feel uneasy and it was on edge and it was a revolutionary thing in filmmaking, but it almost didn't happen actually. The pre-release screenings of Psycho and the infamous shower scene, they didn't have that. But then according to Screen Online Curator at the British Film Institute, Michael Brook, it was only the second version that had that music added and people leapt out of their seats, especially once those shrieking violins started. Another movie that used music in this way is Jaws. I think I have to get into that one. Dun 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 You know, it's like, it's great. And it builds that suspense through music. Let us know some of your favorite music he sounds down in the comments. And you know what, spell them out, onomatopoeia style. Onomatopoeia, I wanna see it, it's gonna be great. But it isn't always things that you necessarily hear that make you feel something. Some filmmakers use something called infrasound to evoke feelings of fear and dread in their audience. You can't even hear this. Infrasound refers to that below the audible wavelength, so anything under 20 hertz, below human hearing ability. Infrasound does happen in nature, things like volcanoes and avalanches and earthquakes. They all create infrasound. They're all pretty scary. Some animals can produce infrasound, 
uh, like elephants, and they use them to avoid natural disasters. The effect it has on humans is actually really, really creepy, because we can't really hear it, but somehow we can sense it. In some cases, it can cause things like chills or anxiety and depression, even nausea. In 2003, British scientists studied the effects of infrasound on humans, and acoustic scientists at the National Physical Laboratory in England, Richard Lord, and his colleagues would play live music for people, and some of that live music had infrasound underneath. They asked the audience to describe how they felt about the music that they'd been played, and without knowing which ones had infrasound, 22% reported more unusual experiences when it was present. They reported things like feeling uneasy or sad. They got chills or scared. You know, it's just, it's crazy how this can affect us and we can't even hear it. Of course, it wasn't long until composers figured this out and the horror and thriller flicks started throwing this in. Many think that paranormal activity used infrasound to produce some fear, and producers of the 2002 French psychological thriller Irreversible admitted to doing that same thing as well. But if you can use sound to directly affect how someone feels about a movie, right? If you're taking that sound and you're playing it, can't even hear it sometimes, and you're making people feel things that they wouldn't have normally. What if we add more stuff, you know? We've already got seeing stuff, we've already got hearing stuff, but can we make this an even richer experience? Add more senses and more walls of sound? We can, and we'll talk about that tomorrow on Test Tube Plus. Let us know down in the comments what your favorite movie sound is. Remember, onomatopoeia, people! And also come back tomorrow so you can get the next and last episode of this series. Come find the show on Twitter. You can find us at Test Tube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. See you tomorrow.